So let's look at the fourth of the JEDI principles, inclusion. Inclusion as principle is producing a context in which everyone present has the opportunity to make a meaningful and valued contribution. And everyone present is supported to experience a sense of belonging to the group as they are who they are. So inclusion is a context, right? They're like, oh, this is an inclusive context. This is a context where inclusion is present. And it has these two aspects because you can just be there, but unless you have a opportunity to make a contribution that's meaningful and valued by others, will you really feel included? And you can just imagine, you know, if you were at a party and you weren't really participating, you weren't really, you know, a part of it, then you might not really feel the same experience of belonging. Whereas if it was a potluck and you brought, you know, a salad and everyone loved your salad, the experience of belonging, the experience of included uh, is really, really going to be there for you because you uh, have been able to contribute something. And that second piece is people belonging as they are who they are, right? The other aspect of inclusion is creating a sense of belonging that is not conditional on uh, people meeting certain unreachable or very difficult to reach standards, right? Like you have to be a certain race, ethnicity, gender, class is one form, but even that you have to show up in a very particular way every single day. And if you're having a maybe difficult day, that doesn't mean you, you know, uh, throw that all over everyone else, but you know, is there room for you to still belong uh, as you are that day? So these are the two aspects of the inclusion principle. Let's look at an example at cultivating inclusion using the principle that we've just defined. Remembering that there's two aspects to inclusion, creating an opportunity for purpose and an opportunity for belonging. Purpose, belonging, inclusion. So. I was at a meeting that was for a team that I was a part of, and an unnamed, uh, unknown uh, leader of that organization and team, um, me, um, did a lot of the talking at the meetings. And that seemed normal because a lot of us have been on teams where one person kind of is leading the project and so they are doing a lot of the talking. But in addition to my voice getting tired, uh, it didn't leave much room for other people to be included in what we were doing. So we had to start coming up as a team that prided itself talking about and working on diversity, inclusion, these kinds of things to really start to look at, hmm, how can we make sure other people are included? So we had to look at, well, purpose and belonging. When it came to purpose, the solution that we came up with was pretty clever because we use it until now and have now helped at least two or three dozen organizations implement it as well. And that is having meeting facilitation roles. So we divided up all of the different roles that it takes to lead a successful meeting. Someone's got to lead us through the agenda and help make sure that we create the agenda. Someone's got to keep us on time. Someone's got to take notes and someone's watching the vibe, making sure people are feeling uh, rested if needed, if they need a break or need to take a deep breath or pause, or if the vibes are getting a little off, maybe we need to take a deep breath. And we created these four roles. And during every meeting, we assign these roles. And our meetings got so much more efficient and fun because now you have four voices instead of one who can chime in. You know, someone's got the timer and the timer goes off and it's like, hey, you know, that was the timer. You have one minute left for this section or do we need more time? Getting everyone's agreement. Okay, we're gonna extend this by five minutes. That timekeeper, right, is really holding that shared resource of time, which also allows us to create more equity, right? Because equity is the distribution of those resources. So who uh, tracks the time is also making sure that one person isn't taking up all of this space. Then you have that uh, note taker uh, who's going to be writing down what's going on. So the person who's leading the meeting can actually just lead it and other people can sh make their contributions and know that someone has dedicated themselves to writing that down. Also writing things down is a very important role because that's the kind of historian or documentarian of what happened in that meeting. So 
that person's biases will really affect how this meeting is remembered. So it's important to kind of separate the person who's leading the meeting and this person who's taking the notes because if I'm leading the meeting and I have a way that I want it to go, I might not even intentionally notice that as I'm trying to take notes and lead the meeting and make sure everyone's participating and we're finishing on time, I might not capture uh, those notes in the same way that someone else who didn't have my bias or agenda would. So it's really helpful to separate out note taking. The Vibe Keeper would often help us start off with a little grounding meditation, even just one minute of silence at the beginning of meeting, one minute at the end to kind of wrap it up so that we're moving into the next thing in a clear way, pausing us if we start to get a little heated or even conflict arises. And those meetings are so engaging as well as being so much more productive and effective. The second thing we started doing is rotating those roles. Even if I had a lot to say in a certain meeting, someone else can still facilitate the meeting and when it comes to an agenda item that I'm taking a lead on, they pass it to me, I can do my thing, they take it back, bring it to the next agenda item or whatever. And even just the art, the act of having someone else kind of give me permission to speak and then take that permission back and, and you know, it really, really changes the dynamic and the energy of that meeting. So that are a few ways that you can spread the sense of purpose, the opportunity to make a meaningful and valued contribution to the group. Multiple people now have that opportunity and they can make a meaningful contribution. As it comes to belonging, that alone might create more a sense of belonging because you know you left that meeting like, wow, I really did a great job at making sure we stayed on time. I really had to you know cut Mazin off and make sure he didn't keep going. But there are more things we can do, and something that we did do is started implementing check-ins. A check-in round can do so much to help everyone arrive at the meeting. And when I say arrive, obviously we're all here, but I mean really be present. And those kinds of check-in questions might be like, what's one thing you need to say so that you can be present here? Or what's one thing you're grateful for right now? Or what's one thing that's going well? Or what's one intention or hope you have for our meeting? All of these kinds of prompts help us to kind of center and bring our awareness away from where we were and to the present moment, to the interaction we're having together. And sometimes we don't have time for everyone to spend five minutes, you know, going into whatever is going on or we have a larger group. So a check-in could be done via chat if you're at a virtual meeting. Everyone, you know, write down three or four words that describe how you're feeling right now or even one word that encapsulates, you know, your present moment. And Instead of everyone going around, you know, everyone can just share it in the chat or you can do a quick round. Everyone says, you know, present, confused, tired or whatever. And it's one word each. And that two minutes, three minutes really gave everyone a chance to like look at each person, acknowledge, OK, this is who I'm with. Have that sense in that moment of connection. And it says to folks, hey, you can be how you are. I'm literally asking you how you are. Right. So that gives the brain a signal that I'm welcome here. I'm not just, you know, here as a cog in a machine. I'm a human. My humanity is recognized and that creates a sense of belonging. So that's an example of how you can start to cultivate more inclusion in your organization. But as you can imagine, uh, you might not just want to be inclusive of the folks that are already in the room. That's important. It's an important place to start. Otherwise, why would else anyone want? Why would else would anyone else want to join, you know, this party, this event, this group? But you might want to be including folks that aren't currently present. And that same question uh, comes to arise, or two questions. One, how can we give people a sense of purpose? How can we give them a sense of being able to contribute to the group, right? Uh, so if I were hosting a party or hosting an event like those wellness events I mentioned in regards to diversity, can we create the event in such a way where there is an interactive or engaging aspect where, you know, upon people coming there, everyone is checking in and saying, hey, this is who I am, or you're having people pair off. This is a really easy thing to do on Zoom. Just create a little pair share moment. People can talk to each other, share a little bit about themselves, and now you know they've gotten to make a contribution. And um, even if you have something that's a little bit less intimate, like an organization coming together, you might just start to, in your design of your product, in the design of your services, think about how can I make sure that the people I want to feel included have some kind of opportunity to do something, to contribute something. It's a little counterintuitive, right? Sometimes when you're hosting someone, you're like, don't lift a finger, just sit right there, right? Don't do anything. But 
have you ever come to a potluck and you brought some kind of a meal, right? That thing that you're bringing to share is kind of like this anchor that you have. It's like, this is the thing I brought. You know, I can't, maybe it's because our ancestors, you know, really food was important to them, but because, uh, you know, for survival. But, um, you know, like I brought this and because I'm able to contribute this, I matter. And that means that people care about me and I won't be forgotten about or tossed aside. That's kind of the primal, you know, fear that a lot of us have is that, you know, am I safe here? Am I welcome? Do I matter? Am I important? And so when you can give people an opportunity to contribute, not only do they contribute to the situation, the situation is better, but it also gives their brain a signal. Hey, you got to contribute something. You're a part of this. You matter. And the second piece is about belonging is really that question of can we make sure that people feel a sense that they can be who they are as they are in this situation. That can be done through signaling of, like a check-in example like I gave earlier, um, or you might literally state this or that group of people are welcome here. You've seen that all over the United States. People started putting up posters saying, you know, uh, immigrants are welcome here, etc., etc., and these can mean a lot for someone. It's like, well, that's definitely not, an, uh, you know, this uh, the same statement as someone who, you know, might uh, have. I mean, you think about the impact of, you know, no X Y Z allowed, right? No blacks allowed here, no women allowed, whatever. That really sends a message: you're not supposed to be here. And that's like the opposite message, saying you are welcome here. So these are some examples, um, and you can continue to get creative. How can I create a sense of purpose and belonging so that we can cultivate the principle of inclusion? Thanks.